five minutes extra. Thank you all. On December 15th, 1991, the United States will celebrate the 200th anniversary of the Bill of Rights. The importance of this document is hard to overstate. By any measure, it is one of the great landmarks in the advancement of human rights and liberty. Our forefathers created this staunch bulwark to secure the rights they had won in the American Revolution only a few years earlier. They were keenly aware that throughout history, the greatest violators of individual rights have been governments. And having recently cast off one form of tyranny, they wanted to assure that another would not arise in its place. Their wisdom proved to be great. Under the shield provided by the Bill of Rights, the new nation, known as the United States, grew and prospered like no other in human history. Between 1790 and 1890, the population doubled four times, from fewer than four million people to 63 million, and it nearly doubled again to more than 120 million by 1930. People poured in at a rate never before witnessed, never before imagined. Why did this happen? Quite simply, because America truly was the land of freedom and opportunity, the shining example which drew the best and the brightest yearning to breathe free. They came here by the millions, our ancestors, to escape the taxes, the conscription, and the stifling controls which were the norm throughout much of the world. Today, we tend to forget just how powerful a magnet that promise of freedom was a century ago, but it was powerful indeed. The tide of, of, of migration to the United States was so immense that it literally decimated many parts of Europe, and the effect it had is startling even now. Today, there are two-thirds as many Americans of German descent as the population of Germany. More Americans of English descent than the population of England, and eight times as many Irish Americans as Irish. Is that incredible? Eight times as many. Unfortunately, the blessings of liberty were not to remain undisturbed. Throughout our history, there have been continuing attempts to undo the victories of the American Revolution, to reimpose the ancient order of things where government reigns supreme and individual liberties are crushed. Today, our rights and liberties are everywhere under attack. A broad coalition of meddlers, plunderers, and power seekers is systematically working to take away the freedoms which made America great. Its leaders include the politicians who command both the Republican and Democratic parties. And they are united. They are united in their quest for ever greater power over every aspect of our lives. The Libertarian Party offers an alternative. We are the defenders of liberty, the only hope for those who stand firm in defense of the Bill of Rights. And if ever a defense was needed, it is now. Virtually every provision of the Bill of Rights is now being openly ignored. Free speech is all but extinct on many college campuses as political correctness gangs roam the grounds in search of heretics. Search and seizure are performed routinely at the whim of the police, and property rights are trampled in the name of social justice or saving the environment. The most concerted attempt to abridge our rights, however, may be the push to undermine the Second Amendment, the right of the people to keep and bear arms. Republicans and Democrats alike are falling over one another to disarm the American people, and one has to ask why. The answer is simple enough and has nothing to do with preventing crime. 
The plain fact is that gun control doesn't keep weapons out of the hands of criminals. It simply dis it disarms the law-abiding citizen. Washington, D.C. has strict laws banning handgun ownership, yet 483 people were murdered in the District of Columbia last year. In contrast, North Dakota, with a slightly larger population and virtually no restrictions on gun ownership, had only four murders in the last year we have statistics for, 1989. So much for the theory that gun control prevents crime. No, the reason that power-hungry politicians want to nullify the Second Amendment is that tyrants and would-be tyrants fear an armed populace. They know that people with weapons are harder to control than people without. This is why the British sent troops out to Lexington and Concord in April of 1775. They had heard that some of the colonists had muskets and rifles, and they set out to confiscate them. The colonists, bless their hearts, stood firm, and the rest is history. If they had meekly handed over the guns, their guns, our national anthem would probably still be God Save the Queen. For too long, the defense of Second Amendment rights has consisted largely of guys in hunting caps who talk about the sportsman's right to go out every fall and shoot a couple of ducks. And while I appreciate their concern, I think they are missing the central point. The Second Amendment is not about duck hunting. It is about the right and the ability of a free people to defend themselves against tyranny. To put it another way, when only the police have weapons, you have a police state. <laughs> is it an exaggeration to say that America is becoming a police state? Here are some facts which may shock you. According to the Justice Department, the nation's population of jail inmates grew by 77% from 1983 to 1989. We now have more than one million people in jails and prisons, and the United States has the highest imprisonment rate of any major nation, 426 inmates per 100,000 population. In second place is South Africa with 333, third is the Soviet Union with 268. I find this alarming, and even more alarming in my opinion, is the nearly unanimous cry by Republican and Democratic politicians to pass more laws, spend more money on police state schemes, and build more prisons. The problem with this country is not that we have too few prisons. The problem is that we have too many laws. The truth of this statement is shown by the harassment of Dennis and Niles Gerbaz, I hope, I hope I'm pronouncing their name correctly, recently recounted, recounted by syndicated columnist Walter E. Williams. The Gerbaz brothers are two older gentlemen who live near Carbondale, Colorado. Recently, one of their neighbors caused the Roaring Fork River to flood about 10 acres of their land. They wanted to undo the damage, but the Environmental Protection Agency ordered them not to on the grounds that their land was now a, quote, wetland. <laughs> they went ahead anyhow, and now the EPA has levied a $45 million fine against them. $45 million for practicing flood control on their own property. To the Gerbaz brothers and everyone else who has been victimized by these haughty bureaucrats, I say, take heart. The Libertarian Party is on your side. Vote us in and we'll throw those arrogant bozos out.
Another horror story, also from Williams. Adam Sparks owns a hotel in San Francisco. It's a tourist hotel, not a residence hotel. And Sparks has never sought long-term residence. But apparently, the people who run the city of San Francisco think that he should be doing just that. Specifically, he has been ordered to set aside 69 rooms in his hotel for low-income housing. Mr. Sparks says this would put him out of business and has refused. For his terrible crime of noncompliance, he's been fined $100,000 and sentenced to 178 days, days in jail. These are relatively minor examples of arrogant government gone berserk, however. By far the greatest assault on the Bill of Rights is being waged in the name of the Holy War on Drugs. There is no doubt that drug abuse is a tragedy, specifically when it afflicts our nation's young people, and most especially when its victims are those who are born addicted to drugs because their mothers are addicts. But drug abuse is a medical problem, and it won't be solved by trashing our rights and liberties. The so-called war on drugs is a terrible mistake. By outlawing certain substances, the Democratic and Republican politicians have created a situation where distribution of those substances is totally controlled by huge, ruthless criminal empires. Prices are forced sky high, making the drug trade immensely profitable. The lure of easy money proves nearly irresistible to inner city use, who become the foot soldiers for the drug barons. Violence escalates, crime of all sorts proliferates, and a terrified public becomes willing, even eager, to accept ever-increasing restrictions on individual rights and greater police powers. How far have we come toward the creation of a total police state? Today, in America, in 1991, the police are essentially free to go anywhere and do anything as long as, that they claim, as long as they claim their actions are in some way related to the war on drugs. They can search your home, your car, and your person without a warrant. They can seize your property on the mere suspicion that it was bought with drug money. No proof is required, and if they can't prove their case, they can still keep what they stole from you. A few naive souls may believe that these police state tactics are used only against bad guys, wicked drug dealers who prey on innocent school children. But that's simply not true. Ask Willie Jones. Willie is a gardening contractor who lives in Nashville. Last February, he took $9,600 in cash and went to the airport, planning to go to Houston to buy flowers and shrubs, as he does twice each year. At the airport, he was searched by two police officers who decided that Willie was a drug dealer. After all, who else carries that much in cash? So they simply took his money from him. No evidence of wrongdoing was ever produced, and no charges were filed. But Willie Jones never got his money back. My friends, that's nothing more nor less than armed robbery. And you can ex And you can expect to see more of it until this war on the Bill of Rights is ended. When agents of the state are given carte blanche to rip people off, they will. Nobody is safe, and nobody will be safe until libertarians have restored the Bill of Rights to full force and effect. And to top it all off, the war on drugs isn't even working. In a recent magazine article, former San Jose Police Chief Joseph D. McNamara states that, quote, it should be painfully obvious that this strategy has not worked. Most people in local law enforcement feel drug abuse has increased. Later in the same article, he says, quote, history shows that greatly increased arrests and incarceration for drug crimes in the United States do not solve the problem. The solution must, should be obvious. We must acknowledge that the war on drugs is a hideous and colossal failure.
The short-sighted and vindictive policies enacted by Democratic and Republican politicians have created a criminal monopoly on the distribution of drugs with all the attendant problems of crime, corruption, and violence. The drug war must be ended now. <laughs> drug abuse must be recognized for what it is, a medical and social problem and its victims must be treated with compassion rather than abandoned to the tentacles of a criminal syndicate. We cannot save the American, by dream, American dream by forsaking our heritage of liberty. Yet, yet another area where our rights are fast being revoked is in the economic sphere. There was a time when working Americans could keep what they earned. No more. Today, Thanks to the greed and ambition of Republican and Democratic politicians, Americans have more than one-third of their earnings confiscated from them each year by governments at various levels. Every year, government spending grows, the politicians vote themselves raises and special perks, and working Americans get stuck with the tab. This goes on under Republican and Democratic administrations alike. Federal spending rose faster under Reagan than under Carter, and it's rising even more rapidly under Bush. Anyone who thinks that the Republicans are the party of low taxes and fiscal restraint must have been living under a rock for the last 20 years. There is no fundamental difference between the Republican and Democratic parties. They both believe that government can and should do everything imaginable. They differ only on how to grab our money and who to give it to. The Libertarian Party has a different vision. Libertarians believe that people have a right to keep what they earn. And when a libertarian majority is elected to Congress, we're going to restore the Bill of Rights, repeal the federal income tax, and make America inspiration to the world once again. The choice is clear and simple. The Democrats and Republicans are the parties of search and seizure, taxation and conscription, socialism and war. The Libertarian Party is the party of freedom and prosperity, liberty and justice, hope and opportunity. The failures of collectivism and big government are clear all over the world. Communism and socialism are everywhere in retreat, clinging to power where they still do, only through force, fraud, and terror. The people of the earth have seen through the sham. They know that the hollow promise of a worker's utopia leads only to dungeons and empty shelves. Fortunately, we are not doomed to repeat their mistakes. The United States need not experience the horrors that have so terribly stained the world this century. The Libertarian Party can lead this nation out of the dead end it is fast approaching. With our help, the 21st century will be the century of liberty. The task is formidable. The challenges are great. But we have seen that the desire for freedom is strong and getting stronger around the world. The ideals of the American Revolution have spread to every corner of the earth. Let us bring them home again.
Thank, th <laughs> th thank, thank you all very much. My friends, we are winning. Is the chair coming up to the... Uh... Yes. <laughs> Okay, um, apparently we have an opportunity for questions. Mr. Nolan. I, I'm willing to answer questions. I didn't, I didn't know that it was customary to take questions after keynote speech, but I'd be happy to, I, I'd be happy to do it. That's true. Does anybody have any questions on any of the points that I raised? I think this is the first time I've ever seen a libertarian audience without questions. <laughs> we'll let it rest where I let it rest. Thank you.